But my hands won't go any higher. This has happened to me. I didn't know what to do. I went and got some help. I was like, oh, I can't do this. And I, I can't do this. And I, or the doc's like, hey, let's increase that mean. You see how it turns up? Now, what they can do is two. One for fine cleaning, one for court cleaning. This is this court, down here. This is how you got your But I've got this thing that you really wanted in the middle. But I've got this thing all the way over here. See, I'm going to do that. Okay. But let's say I had to do that. Okay. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I'm going over. I can't get any more ants. I can't get any more of that. Just because you don't have enough money. But you don't you have a lot of that? Uh, the finest flow. So if huh. you don't have enough buy flow, okay. the uh, ants won't go up and the uh, hertz won't go up? Well, the hertz probably, the hertz will be hard. But this, mm -hmm. you, you'll, it'll be sitting at 83 and you keep turning it and it don't go any higher. Or if you got the mean air pressure at 20 and this thing's all the way over here and it won't go any higher, you don't have enough buy flow. It's a driving pressure. You can't, it doesn't have enough to actually fulfill that, that thing. It's like, I need more flow in there if you want me to do that. But be careful, because if I go up on the flow... When you got a little baby... Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is just go up a little, keep tweaking things as you're going up a little bit. And generally with kids, like a bias flow of uh, 10 or 12 is usually plenty. Where an adult may end up doing 30 to 40 bias flow. Generally, you don't want excessive bias flow, but then you're having to move over here and you, there's no reason for it. You may be actually causing some problems. Too much flow in there. Create more pressure and stuff that you want. So, what mean airway pressure do you want for like a kid? You get that from the ventilator. So, you put them on the ventilator first, then you take them off? Though? No, but. Generally, like if when you read the books, it's like what we're not saying say that. And you know, that was plateau, and this is my mean airway pressure. So you walk up there, and my mean, my mean airway pressure is eight. So I'm starting ten. Generally you want to go up here from two to five. What if this is the first thing you put them on? Huh? What if that's the first thing you put them on? The daughter generally tells you. Okay. But if I had a twenty four week around coming out, I'd probably put it on eight or nine. Because I'm, uh, if you have a 24 weeker coming out and you put it on the van, their mini wear pressures are 9 or 10, and you're, you're going 50%, you need to start that. Kid. I mean, flat out. Mini wear pressures of 10 is high oh, or 24 weeker. That's really high. Uh, so it, when you set this up and they come in and take the x ray, you definitely want to make sure you go look at that x ray and count the number of ribs expanded. Because if they're 10 ribs, you will get a So you want to turn this down. There you go. If it's more than 10, you said? Yeah, if you look on there and it's 10, I would just say, hey, doc, I looked at it, it's 10. Uh, you want to try to wean that mean air pressure, and the doc will probably say yes. And you'll turn it down and step that by two up. Because I've, I've seen babies at 11 ribs, that is a major, major problem. You want to get what about peds? Same thing. They, you, those same numbers? Yeah, same thing with adults. Unless they're old COP or So adults shouldn't go up more than 10 over there? Well, now, ribs. My bad. What? what? I, I was talking about ribs expanding. Oh. So when you set the mean airway pressure, you always want to keep that balance going between how much mean, how much FIO2. Yeah. But if you go look at the x-ray, you always look at the x-ray on these And you go up to an adult, and you look at the x-ray, and they're like 11 ribs. You need to try to wean that the best you can. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the pressure the whole time. Uh, my bad. I see <laughs> okay. the confusion. Uh, the theory behind it is that with this right here, it's, it has that gel, it just holds that pressure and just moves it. If you think about it, it is the most gentle way to ventilate. Just moving a little mole molecules out, right? And that one over there uses generally higher pressure. It just maintains it with a little dump. There's two different ways to think about it. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, that's what Super good question, honestly. I can't truly answer that. The only thing I can tell you is that based on all the big things that they've done, the biggest one they did, this has the worst outcome, which you think it would have the best. Yeah, so high peak low tidal volume was number one, even in the NASA study. And then down here. And probably because they can't spontaneously breathe. Well, and that's part of it. If they're not, if, for this one right here, you don't want to breathe. For that one, you do want to breathe. And that's how they, they did the, the, the study. So, hey, high peak low tide line, and then down here, a good little mark is APRV. I'll tell you way down here. If you parallel, parallel, 
it seems like this would be the golden goose if you think about it, but it's not. It is not the golden goose. Why doesn't this work perfectly? And I've had a discussion with several doctors, and the doctor had the most prep for it. He said, yeah, I think I told you guys, there's no sugar bowl there. He said, all we can do is manipulate little things to try to get better outcomes. He says, don't even think about that. But this is this here again, they get in the baby long, slowly open it up a little bit, and just gently vibrate this one. Okay. And I'll show you over here. I'll use purple. So let's just say for easy numbers sake that our mean airway pressure equals 20. And let's say that our hertz equals eight, which equals what's eight? Um, 480. And then our uh, amp was 10. I'm just using easy numbers. That's all of them. Okay. So the mean air pressure is sitting here, right? And that is at 20. Let's say this is 0, 10, 30, 40. Okay. So our amps are 10, right? So 10 into 20 is what? 2. Well, yeah. actually, it must be. Amps are the same. Wait, 10 into 20? Yeah. <coughs> oh, wait a minute. You take the... Uh, what the hell is that? Anyway, you take the mean air pressure, divide it in half, you get 10. And then the 10, that's how far that that's going to go up in the one this, right? Or you take the amps divided by 2. My bad. Didn't mean to confuse you. <laughs> divide the amps by 2, not the... Provide the amps by two to get the mean airway pressure? No. So the mean airway pressure is 20. And let's just make this a bigger number. Let's say that this is also 20. So what's half of 20? 10. 10. So it's going to go from 20 up to 30 down to 10. Okay. So that's how tall. You, you take your amps about in half. That's how far above and below the, the mean airway pressure line. Divide the amps by two. Right. So if this was 30, I would go up to 35, down to 5. If this was uh, 40, I would go up to 40 and zero. If this was 60, I'd go up to whatever is above that, and I'd go to negative 10. It would actually go below zero. And that's the, and that's the reason the amps determines this and this. So how high is it? That's how hard it's in those molecules. But now, the on the other hand, the hertz is how fast, right? So let's say I have somebody on uh, really fast hertz. Let's say that that's 12 hertz, right? So generally speaking, what they do is they look at this as a tidal volume right here. That little area between there, that's how far that molecule moves near that time. So this is how hard I'm hitting it. This is how far I'm going to move it in one, one, I don't know what you call it, one hertz, back and forth. That's how far it moves. So let's increase, let's take our hertz and let's turn it on down. Let's increase that movement, right? Yeah. So the smaller the hertz, the well, wait, that's what I'm getting into. Oh, okay. So let's say that uh, we turn down the hertz. And we're going to really turn it down. Thank you. Thank you. That's like okay. on my ear. Now look at the volume here. It's like... It's a bigger, bigger time volume. And that's one way you can think about it to help you kind of see the process of how it works. Did that answer it? Did, you, did that answer for you? Yes, it did. Thank you. Well, yeah. I was hoping that's what you was asking. Yes, that was what I was asking. <laughs> the lower the hertz, um, the less breaths you're getting per minute. So less frequency, less they breaths. They would be longer. Right. So you'd you be moving the, those molecules a lot more. Mm -hmm. Carl, yeah. How do you check the tidal volume? You don't. You don't? There, you don't chart tidal volume? There's no way to check it. <gasps> so does that kind of see mm -hmm. it a little bit better? Yeah. So what I want you to do is, is now we're going to get a baby. I've got all the initial settings up here, okay? And for you guys, I'm going to do an adult just because it's it's too hard to see the flows on there, honestly. I, you can't 